Hi everybody, I'm Captain Floofers, and welcome back to Pokemon Crystal Clear. Uh, when we left off, uh, we got our first badge, uh, the Rising Badge from Claire. Um, fortunately, without having to go through any extra bullcrap. And now we're actually heading down to Goldenrod City area to get ourselves an Abra. I don't want to trigger too many uh, trainers on the way down, because I don't want to overlevel too much, but... Then again, um, once we do get an Abra, I do at the very least want to <laughs> level that up quite a bit because Abras only know teleport, and um, the, th the, the funny thing is, I think I, I know I mentioned this last time. I'm pretty, much, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it last time, but just in case I didn't, uh, once it evolves into Kadabra at level 16, we can immediately evolve it into Alakazam uh, because there's a uh, an NPC. Uh, in the Goldenrod um, department store, I think? It's either the, the department store or the Pokemon Center, uh, who can evolve uh, Pokemon that are normally evolved by a trade. So we're going to go into our next uh, next gym toting a, uh, a nice um, Stage 3 evolution, which is not normally something uh, that happens... Um, at least not happen it doesn't usually happen with me. I know that if, if I was playing something like this on a regular game, um, and I had access to someone who could I could trade with real quick, then yeah, I could get an Alakazam right away. This guy only has a Voltorb. He's one of the ones where you can get their Pokegear number, and then they'll call you back for rematches, and then he'll have like electrodes and stuff later. Because that's one of the things with uh, Gen 2 with the Pokegear is that um, there are certain trainers that, that will challenge you re-challenge you over time, and they'll have more evolved Pokémon as they go. Although, funnily enough, there is one guy near Azalea Town who starts off with, like, a Machop and a Geodude, and at one point, because of an oversight, he has a Machamp, which is the stage 3 of Machop, and then it goes, like, on la in later fights, it'll go right back to being a Machoke. I always find that funny, and it's, like, like a level 20-something... Machamp or something like that. I think normally Machop evolves at like level 20 or level 30 something? I don't know. We're not using Machamp in either case, but. Oversights are funny sometimes. Unless they make your, uh, your game a big mess, like, you know, Gen 1. And that's one of the reasons I very rarely go back to Gen 1. Um. Uh, I remember when, uh, a few years back, during the 20th, uh, Pokemon's 20th anniversary, um, they were releasing, that's when they were originally released, uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow on the 3DS Virtual Console. And I was, I was debating for the longest time whether or not I should get one. I eventually did get Red. Um, and I also got a full Pokedex of 151 because I used the Mew Glitch. And the only other Pokemon I cheated to get, I think, was Tauros, because... Screw Tauros. Um, I caught every other Pokemon in the Safari Zone that needed it, like Scyther. I got Scyther in the Safari Zone, I got Chansey in the Safari Zone, I think. Or, no, I think I got Ch Chansey in Cerulean Cave. I got Kangaskhan in the Safari Zone, but not Tauros. Because Tauros is the hardest thing to get, because it is that prone to running away all the time. So I was like, screw it, and I used the... Um, I used the Cinnabar Coast Glitch to get Tauros, but that's the only thing I'd really use the Glitch to get, other than Mew, because that's the only way that you can get Mew. And um, they certainly weren't distributing Mews in North America, like they were in Japan, but I digress. Um, but uh, I was debating it for the longest time, because like every time I thought of, of Gen 1, I just thought of how far we had come since then, and how... You know, in comparison to most other Pokemon games these days, you know, um, Generation 1 is in many ways just kind of like a glitchy mess. Uh, it's, it's unbalanced because of oversights, um, mainly revolving around the Psychic type, which is why the Psychic type just like sweeps everything in the game. Because due to oversights, it has no weaknesses, and uh, or it practically has no weaknesses. 
One of the weaknesses is glitch to not even work on it, and the other one doesn't have any good moves. I mean, even if ghost type wasn't glitched, still wouldn't, um... I don't think Diglett knows any ground type moves at this level, so I should be okay with just tackling it. Um... Ghost didn't have, like, any... The only, like... Like, damage moves that didn't it had that wasn't, like, fixed damage was Lick, and Lick sucks. I mean, yeah, it can paralyze, but it has, like, base 10 attack. Like, the only other damaging Ghost move is Nightshade, which just did your Pokémon's level worth of damage, but that's neither here nor there. Um, well, actually, that is germane to the conversation, but still. Um, I was just like, if, I, if I'm going to play Gen 1, I'll play Leaf Green, but I eventually did go about saying, yeah, I'll just, I'll go ahead and just get, um, red. All the other Pokemon I got, by the way, I got through Jordan. You know Jordan. Um, because Jordan had blue version on his 3DS. Then he lost his 3DS for, like, literally years and, like, just found it again recently. When he was moving. And that just made me like, okay, here's all the games you're going to put on it. Okay. And I haven't, uh... I haven't been recording this and putting things up every day, but, uh, I mean, today's Wednesday. But, um... You know, like I said before, I, I just I just can't manage to keep a schedule even every time I try, so... Uh, I've mostly just been... Oh! We're gonna get a Flaffy. So that's our Stage 2 Sheep to go with our Stage 2 Turtle now. That's always great. And then at 30, uh, she'll be Ampharos. fight these, I suppose. Um, but yeah, there have been, there, most of the, most days recently, like the past couple of days, I just wanted to play Shedmoo 3 and get that darn Platinum Trophy. Although, um, I, uh, kind of screwed up with planning the steps and getting all the trophies, and I'm kind of stuck on one where I have to grind up a grind up 50, uh, 500,000, like, gambling tokens. And, um... Why am I using Thundershock? Oh, well. Basically, the, uh... What I'm... Because the only things I have left to do are getting all the gambling tokens and getting the last capsule machine done. Because the cap last capsule machine is, like, in the endgame area, which is past the point of no return, so I haven't gone there yet. And my, um, my current, uh, I'm going to put Four Turtle out front so she can get, she's my, basically the next one up to its next, uh, milestone, which is 20. I'm hot stuff, oh yeah. Um, but yeah, the, um, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know what I'm saying now. Oh yeah, uh, the, the best way I found that I can really get the tokens without either getting too bored or too frustrated. I mean, is just to get money and then buy the tokens outright. So I've been just kind of like watching YouTube and the side just do that fishing and, and forklifting. And I, I, cause I go I'm not on the internet. I, I found that there was a way, there were a couple of ways to easily cheese um getting a lot of, just getting a lot of, uh, of money. Um, but those were actually, um, patched out of the game. Uh, like, like the main way up until, like, version, like, 1.03 was to, um, or 1.04, I think, was to, there are, like, four specific books that you can buy, and then you can basically trade them 
at a uh, trade them at any pawn shop to get a certain skill book. And if you already have the skill book and you have extras, you can just sell them for for, for money. And the uh, the cost of the books that you had that you bought from different bookshops was like eleven uh, yuan, which was uh, which is the money. Um, I don't know what what Chinese money actually is, but I'm going with yuan because that's what they're saying in the game, uh, or yuan, or however you, they want to pronounce it. But uh, you, it costs like eleven yuan, but you get like hundred and twenty back for selling the book. So you make like you made like a hundred and nine yuan profit like every time, and it was like really easy to get these books. You just find them on the, at these at, like two specific like bookshops that were like really easy to find. I'm gonna come back here with an Abra. But they patched that out um, in, a, in such a way that you can still get the books, and you can still trade them toward the skill book. And you can still technically make a profit, but they change the prices on the books that you buy. So that it's like, you only make like a 17 yuan profit now, it's not worth it. And then there's like a slightly slower way of doing that, where you buy certain like Buddha statues and trade them in toward a skill book. But, and you get like 80 yuan per... But, like, now, as you buy the statues, the prices of the statues go up. So, that's really not a good way of doing things, either. And the basic consensus on the internet is, just save scum lucky hit. And I tried save scumming lucky hit, and it didn't work for me at all. Uh, because, um, it's so inconsistent. I played lucky hit, like... Even with saves coming, I played a lucky hit like 30 or 40 times, only one like once. Uh, so, at this point, I'm... Just to keep the tedium down as well, I'm gonna just start doing like one in-game day per day, and then I'll eventually get it. But, um... I like Shenmue 3 overall. Um, unlike a lot of people, these they like the Shenmue 3 bad game. That's like the major, major cool thing to say. Because, I mean, yeah, it has its flaws and it's not even the best in the series, but I liked it a lot. Um, and yeah, grinding for, for trophies sucks, but I don't have to do it anymore after that. And I can just play again casually later. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm fairly sure that Abra is still pretty rare in Crystal version. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the video until I find an Abra. Uh, just so I'm not sticking around, because it's mostly like drowsy and stuff. I'm also gonna like avoid this trainer just so I don't fight him right away. I don't want to use... Look at Snubble, too. I don't want Snubble. I don't care about Snubble. Actually, let's, let's, try, let's try a few on camera. Why not? Um, well, actually, before I do this, I probably should check to see if I can buy Great Balls, because catching Abra is going to be a whole other thing. Actually, is this the guy who trades? I'm the tradeback guy. If you have a Pokemon that only evolves through trading, then I can help you out. Do you have any Pokemon that you'd like to evolve? No. Alrighty, well, if you change your mind, I'll still be right here. So that's how you get your Alakazams, your Machamps, your Gengars, Golems, Steelix, Scizor, and Kingdra, and Slowking, and Politoed. I think that's it. That should be it. Do you sell Great Balls? Yes, you do. I would like some Great Balls, please. Um, oh, I can't even afford that many. I might save scum this too, just just to be on the safe side because I'm basically going for my standard um, like red and blue method of catching an abra, which is just chucking a great ball on it, a, a great ball at it, and praying because abra only knows one move that's teleport, and if it uses teleport, it ends the battle. And abra, if I remember correctly, are still fairly rare. Uh, so if I find an abra, I want to make sure that I get one. You got Radita. You got Drowsy here. Drowsy also live on this route. Actually, before we get, actually before we do anything with that, there is one other thing I want to check because I've I've barely played the Crystal version. Like I said, I I have a copy of it here, uh, but I barely played it. Um, I'm not planning on breeding right now, so I'm not going to do anything with Ditto. Just fake it so that's all Ditto is good for is breeding. Ditto sucks otherwise. Um, I think the daycare in the crystal version gives you a rent. Oh, there's an Abra. 
Um, if I was using save states, I would save state by now, but I'm not using save states. The closest I'm doing is like save scumming using the save and load, but... Let's see if the Great Ball will work. Please work. It did not work. Boo. Okay, so before I go Abra hunting again, let's uh, see if I get an egg. Because you, you can get an egg from these people here. What eggs? I was raising a Pokemon with my life, you see. You're shocked to find an egg. How incredible is that? Well, wouldn't you like this egg? Well, fine, it's yours to keep. Now, what the odd egg is... Um... It will give you a random baby Pokemon. So, uh, a Pichu, a Cleffa, an Iglybuff, Tyrogue, Elekid, Smoochum, or Magmar. Magby, I should say. And I believe it's guaranteed to be shiny. So that'll be kind of neat to see what comes of that. And that also means I have two eggs with me, one for Togepi and one for the odd egg. So I'm going to have to box one if we go for Growlithe. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and actually gonna save the game. And I will cut the recording slash jump cut to when I find an Abra. So two seconds, please. Okay, so I know I said that I would just, I would start the video up again once we found an Abra, but considering that it's also a pain in the butt to catch, I figured I would wait until I actually caught one. And I actually found two other ones that didn't catch, but this one did. So, um, this is a male Abra, so it's the... So I guess I'm going to go with the standard name that I usually use for Abra, which for whatever reason, I don't know why... But I got to using... The, I think I used the, this name as well for... I don't know if it was for, for Kadabra in my uh, Red playthrough a long time ago. But I call him Box Lightner. After, uh... After, uh... Actor Bruce Box Lightner. Uh, who played the titular character in Tron. Uh, as well as Captain Sheridan in Babylon 5. No, I don't know why this this uh, this name came up in my uh, naming things repertoire, um, but it has. So there we go. Now, leveling up Box Lightner is going to be a bit tricky. Well, I, by tricky, I mean we're going to have to swap out a lot because he only has teleport, um, and I don't think I have any TMs that he can learn. Unless he can learn Dragon Breath, I doubt it. He can learn Flash, but I'm not going to teach him Flash. I might teach him Flash at some point, but... Um, maybe only, the only one where I'm you know, actually ready to go through a Dark Cave or something. Um, so what I'm going to have to do, send him out first, swap to another Pokemon, and then like basically split the difference as far as experience is concerned. Uh, which will put other Pokemon ahead of him quite a bit, but um, luckily it's only for six levels. Uh, once he, As soon as he evolves, he learns at least Confusion or Psybeam. Uh, I think it's Psybeam. Or both, I guess it depends on the game. Um, and... Even if we if we didn't have a way to evolve him, Kadabra is still a very good Pokemon as well. Uh, although I personally prefer having fully evolved Pokemon, um, that's just a me thing. I always feel kind of irked uh, whenever I, because because Alakazam is like one of my favorite psychic types. It's the one that I use the most. I also use Gardevoir quite a bit um, because they're both very good at that. Um, you know, being a powerful psychic Pokemon thing. But uh, the difference between, you know, Gardevoir and Alakazam is that you can evolve Gardevoir all the way up um, without uh, having to trade. Also, Gardevoir's part fairy now, so that counts for something. So I'm going to go back and start using some of these trainers up. 
That's, that's the, this is the main reason why I wanted to uh, avoid trainers on the way down. Um, was so that I had more to give Box Lightner here some ex experience. But I'm fairly sure that even the way we are, we're going to be more than a match, I think, for whatever the next dungeon is, or dungeon, um, gym leader. I also still need to actually scout out, um, well, I say scout out now, um, but I am pretty much a good level to take on the stuff on Route 36, and that's where Growlithe is. Although something, um, I should probably look up is if I can get Growlithe right now. Because if not, I'll just go ahead and move on to the next gym. Um, but uh, I think Growlithe only comes out at night. And uh, we're not going to be seeing any night gameplay um, today. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon right now. And uh, I am not planning on playing... I'm, I don't plan on playing this more than, you know... Uh, one video's worth of footage per session, um, just to kind of break it up, kind of get back into the swing of things as far as videos are concerned. Well, speaking of videos, uh, I will say that, um, I know I haven't done toy videos in freaking forever, but, um, I do have a couple of toys I might want to do things for, uh, one of which is something that... I said that I wouldn't get, and then I ended up just kind of like, I mean, I've been, I've been looking at more stuff. I don't know if it's because of the pandemic or what. I think it's mainly because I've gotten more to talking about uh, tokusatsu and stuff uh, with, um, I, 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 I hate to say a new friend because I've, I've known him for a while. He's one of Jordan's friends. He lives up in New Jersey, and he's. Uh, I've been talking to him a lot more because he he's been uh, DMing for our D and D group, and um, which we we played D and D over Discord, and um, he. It turns out he's really um, really into uh, Tokusatsu and stuff, and um, uh, if uh, if you're into tokusatsu and somehow didn't know this uh I, cause I've, been, I've been talking to him a, a lot lately uh about common rider because um i mean for one thing uh he actually came like right before lockdown happened with, with the pandemic and all that uh he was um down visiting jordan and um because jordan had just moved uh and uh, we were and I went over to, you know, hang out and see his new place, and, and uh, the other guy was there. And, um, we played a lot of Common Rider Climax here, or Climax Scramble, uh, the one on the Switch with Zio in it. And, um, since then, I mean, so for, for those who are into Tokusatsu and somehow didn't know this, uh, Common Rider Kuga was picked up by Shout Factory and is airing, um... On, um... Oh, this is individuals. Alright, you can only fight him at night. Uh, it, it is airing on Pluto TV. Uh, if you, you can catch it on weekdays between 7 p.m. and 9... Or 7... Between 7 and uh, 9, yeah. It's like a two-hour two hour blocks. It's already gone through a full rotation of episodes. I think it should be in the middle of another one now. Um... And also Sundays... Uh, Sunday evenings uh, that has its own uh, separate rotation of episodes. Um, but yeah, I hadn't seen Kuga, and um, we got to talking about it a lot, and um, so I've been looking, I've been buying more things. So one of those things is something that I said in a past review that I wouldn't get, and I just kind of did. And uh, today I was actually out on my uh, standard bi-weekly sojourn to buy groceries. Although, in this case, uh, it had actually been three weeks since I left the house and I was completely out of food. But I had enough to at least get me through, through two today. And while I was out, I also deposited um, my check for Uncle Donald's fun money, as I call it. 
So, um, part of that is going to something that I'm very looking forward to obtaining, and we'll do a video on. Because it's something that I thought I would never own in my lifetime. Did I fight you? Yeah, I did fight you. Okay. I did not fight you. Also, up to the north is the uh, National Park, uh, where the bug contest normally happens on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, but it is neither of those things. It is Wednesday, so we may check it out uh, if, I, if I play after work tomorrow. Like I said, it, um, it depends on the, the kind of mood I'm in, really, when I, when I play this, so... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in, like, full, uh, full-on, you know, creator mode. It's kind of hard to get back into that, especially when I've, the past few months I've been focusing on my backlog. And getting platinum trophies sometimes, but, hey, I'm putting things up. It may not be consistently regular, but, you know... Uh, it's, it's, it's the mighty number nine of upload schedules. It's better than nothing. I know Inafune did, didn't necessarily say that, that was his translator, but the joke still applies. I still like using that joke. Yeah, I know, we're all over mighty number nine and how much it sucks, but, um... Uh, Um, I think there's another trainer over this away. Oh, there's a Growlithe. Wunderbar. Okay. So. I will bring out Tony Stoney, I think. It's good. Uh, she's going to be the most resistant to Growlithe's attacks. I think Growlithe knows Roar, though, so this might be a problem. Luckily, Growlithe doesn't only know Roar, uh, so at the very least, um, it's still possible to do a, a, a standard battle with a Growlithe, but um, now I know that Growlithe shows up here and at decent levels that I can handle. Uh... Let's get Growlithe while we're here. Why not? I wasn't planning on cutting the video again, but, uh, hey. This can be... Uh, no less than a fortuitous circumstance that I am more than willing to capitalize upon. You know, I was just thinking to myself I should probably use a Psychic move on Venonat, but uh, Box Lightner's not even in a cadaver yet. Then as I look through the move list, I see Helga has <laughs> Confusion. I'm like, oh right, Helga has Confusion. I really, really wish I could give Abra another move, though. I don't have any other TMs. Shouldn't have lost that. Are there any other thing are there people here? Yes, there is a person here. I don't think I normally come down this way. Unless I'm, like, backtracking through. I think it's been a while since I played a Gen 2 game. I played, um... I played through Gold. Uh, I got the, the 3DS Virtual Console version of Gold uh, a few years back. Yeah, like two years ago. And I, uh, actually, that was the first time I thought... I know I mentioned it already. Uh, on that, uh, I beat 50 games this year video. Um, but, uh... That was the first time I beat Red at the end. And that was pretty cool. And uh, for those who are inter uh, who are interested, my final um, my final team, I would have had an Alakazam, but again, uh, I didn't have a way to trade because uh, well, I'm fairly sure that Jordan would have liked to have Silver. Uh, he couldn't find his 3DS at the time, so I had to find an alternative. And I ended up actually using Espeon toward near the end until I was able to... Because I, I played the gold version, so I had to wait a bit before I could actually access Lugia. But I use Lugia as my uh, as my psychic type. 
and I also used um, Typhlosion, because that was my starter. Ampharos, because Ampharos. Um, Tyranitar, who I got in the 11th hour. Um, Lugia. Lapras, because uh, I almost always pick Lapras as my water type for gold. And um, Heracross, who I had always been interested in using and never used before, and uh, I like Heracross quite a bit. I was always in interested in Heracross because of the... Uh, I'm, I don't know what it is with me and, like, um, like Rhinoceros Beetle and Stag Beetle aesthetics. Like, I've never really used Pinsir much. Pinsir's a, uh, Pinsir's a Stag, Stag Beetle, but uh, I like Rhinoceros Beetles more than I like Stag Beetles in that kind of instance. And um, so I've always wanted to use Heracross as a result. And um, so I did, and it was pretty great. Although Red Snorlax can... Um, can go and do something not very nice, I suppose. It already does. I don't. I didn't like a Snorlax. That was the main problem I came across. I had to use hair. I use hair across as. Uh, uh, I use reversal. On the Snorlax to get rid of it. Like I, I, I endure in reversal. I think was what I used. I had that kind of a setup with, with hair across, and it was uh, pretty effective for the most part. But it just has so much HP. The Sabra's not... I'm not going to get anything out of the Sabra, because that's going to just going to teleport. Not unless I teleport first! Mwahaha! <laughs> See how you like it. I'm sure the game doesn't care. Um, uh, maybe I'll go for more of the trainers down on... Round 34 again. Let's get rid of this Pidgey. Also, I guess in order for the, the friendship thing to really kick in on Pokemon that are following you, you gotta check in on him every once in a while, because off-screen I checked Pris again, and she's like, it, Pr Pris seems to have missed you. So it's kind of kind of like the Pikachu in Let's Go. Um, if you don't check on them or use them a lot, then they'll start to not like you, or they'll start to get mad at you. Although, um, Pokemon that follow you around in Let's Go are 100% more adorable. Uh, they look, oh, they look, there's, there's items in the bushes you can have. And they'll bring you, bring you items. Pikachu will, or, uh, Eevee, I suppose, as well. Munching at the grass. As sheep do. Uh, P Pikachu, well, uh, Pikachu, in my case, gave me presents. Um, she found things and wrapped them up in a leaf. And gave them to me, and I'm like... That is so wholesome. It makes me want to cry. That's pretty much that's, that's pretty much like my uh, my entire experience with Let's Go was was pretty much that, um, and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. Because when when they first announced Let's Go, I was like, I, I really wasn't interested because I don't like Pokemon Yellow that much. Um, I didn't like. Uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a big Pikachu fan in general. Um, I didn't like being stuck with a dumb starter that... Like, I mean, to, to be fair, like, beating Brock is not hard in, in Yellow because you can find Mankey and uh, Nidoran and Butterfree and stuff like that that can get rid of the get rid of his rock types easily. Um, but just, I didn't like Pikachu, and it, it's mainly because I also don't like the anime that much. And, um, I didn't like, at, especially at the time, I didn't like how the game was trying to emulate the anime so much. I thought it was unnecessary. Um. But, um. So that, that's pretty much one of the things I didn't want, that's why I didn't want anything to do with Let's Go. Uh, although, after, later, after, uh, a uh, after the game came out and I started seeing, like, reviews and stuff on it, it actually looked pretty fun. And I watched somebody play, I think it was Pro Jared, I watched his, um, Let's Go Caterpie, as he put it. Uh, I'm like, actually, this this looks pretty good. I may pick this up sometime down the road. And then I just impulse bought it, like, a few months ago. And, uh, 
uh, played a lot of it while I was down in Florida uh, back in April. And um, it was it was genu genu genuinely very good. And um, ironically, uh, I didn't pick up Sword and Shield um, because honestly, because as, as far as as mainstream Pokemon goes, it, like it had nothing to do with Dexit. I mean, I I did not like the fact that Ampharos wasn't there, but I can understand them, you know, cutting the bloat and. You know, I, I don't like how they lied about how, oh, no more Pokemon are coming back. Um, other than the ones that are here, and then more Pokemon came back. I don't like how they lied about that. That was a lie. Um, but, you know, regardless, um, the game looked fine. It's just, from what I was seeing, it didn't... I mean, I, I was... The, the main reason I wasn't picking it up is because I, I didn't care. Um, I'm really getting sick of the mainstream... The main series ones now. Um, they never have really gotten much better. Um, Gen 4 through 7, to me, have been okay at best. And I know that there are a lot of fans of, you know... Platinum. There are a lot of fans of Black and White. I'm just not one of those people. I think the last time that they they had a Pokemon game, actually the last Pokemon game that wasn't a remake that I actually really really enjoyed, I think was was Black Two. And I think I, I liked Sun quite a bit as well, but like not nearly to the extent of like you know Gen Two or Three. And um. You know, when Sword and Shield were announced, I'm like, I just don't care. Um, I was, I was like, full on into backlog mode, and I'm like, I, this is not enough of a distraction for my backlog for me to want to get this right away. And uh, ironically, when I did, you know, impulse buy and play Let's Go Pikachu, um, Greg had um, had bought Pokemon Sword, which is. Uh, surprising to me because he hadn't played a Pokemon game really since Gen 1. Um, there are several things weird that just happened here. I missed what they were sending out next. I just kind of picked Tony Stoney offhand, forgetting that, it, that, that it's a Hopip and thus a Grass type. So I'm like, oh crap, why did I send the Rock and Ground type out against the Grass type? Then I remember at low levels, Hopip only has Splash, so I'm like, oh, this is fine then. Why does Hopip know Splash? Because in Japan, uh, Splash is actually just called Hop. And it made sense to call it Splash back when Magikarp first had it. But now that other things have it too, it makes less sense. Um, but yeah, the only games I know of that Greg, um, that Greg really played as far as Pokemon is concerned were, like, blue, yellow, um, he had gotten a ROM, or no, he had gotten, like, Diamond or something like that at some point, or he had a ROM for Diamond, and played at least partway into it, and he had X for a while, too, but, like, those were games that he never really got into, and then, like, he got Sword, and he actually played through Sword, but he said it wasn't very good. Um, so I feel justified in not getting it. And if you like Sword and Shield, then more power to you. I know that there are a lot of people who really liked it. Um, I'm just... Unless it's like a, like a Let's Go redo of Gen 2, uh, or like some redo of Gen 2 or 3 going forward... Um, or maybe even another redo of Gen 1. I'm, you know, I'm just so... That, that's just pretty much how I am, but this is pretty much how I am about a lot of new games coming out. Is that they don't really interest me, but, uh... That's just... Those are the only things I'm going to be going for. And, um... You know, people are still complaining that they, they haven't made Gen 4... Um, remakes yet. 
And quite frankly, I don't see the appeal of that. I think the only great Gen 4 games there were were the Gen 2 remakes. I am screwed. Unless... Oh, I have a berry. Yeah, this, uh... This Bulbasaur... Um... I gave it a chance to use Leech Seed on me, because I had to swap out, because I was only giving, you know, Box Lightner experience. And Pris is the only thing that won't just outright die to this. Am I gonna have to use my only Max Potion? I'm gonna have to use my Max Potion. Because it's all that I have. I didn't I didn't pick up any potions when we were at the last Pokemon Center. Or I could just accept the loss and take the money cut, because uh, I don't have a lot of money. And I have been getting money from other trainers, so... Alright, I'll use the max potion and just tank this out. I'm gonna have to use Thundershock, too. Because I know it's not very effective, but Tackle is worthless now because of so many growls. At least the stab will kind of eat into that, but yeah. Not doing great. I forget, does... does... No, this isn't going to work because... Leech Seed is taking back the exact amount of damage that I'm dealing to him. Or her, or whatever. Oh, cr I'm screwed. I don't even remember. I'm gonna have to sacrifice somebody here. Actually, no. I might be okay. Okay, this gets rid of Leech Seed. Quickly use Confusion. Okay. We good. Probably should have thought to do that in the first place, but I keep forgetting that Helga has Confusion. Because I'm not used to Squirtles or War Turtles having that. And, um... Uh, Pris is the only Pokémon I have that could even be... not killed by that otherwise, but... Then I remembered Helga had Confusion. Um, I just, I just couldn't remember if Leech Seed got, was got, if they got rid of Leech Seed when you swapped, and apparently it does, so. Uh, we're okay. Everything's fine. That was scary. Um, I will have to go and... Buy some, uh, some potions. I don't know if I have enough for a lot of potions, but we can see. The town's just up north. I really wish I was getting more experience from these fights as well, just for Fox Lightner's sake, because you get despondent. Oh, I think it's because it's, it's hurt. He, she, whatever. This is she. Heals the eggs. I'm sure what this toga peak hatches soon, at least. Or hatches soon. I was just debating to myself whether I should stop leveling and focus on getting a Growlithe. But I'm almost out of Great Balls. You don't have potions, do you? Potions are like 300. Yeah. Super potions are way too much. I'll get, I'll get five potions. 
I think I can, I can afford... Can I afford five Great Balls, maybe? I cannot afford five Great Balls. I can afford two Great Balls. I mean, if anything, I can still, you know, do standard combat with the Growl. It's just not going to be as uh, effective because it knows Roar. Oh, I have a Nugget! I can sell that and get more stuff. And that's literally all Nuggets are good for, is selling. For 5,000 money. I forgot that I, I picked that up on uh, in the mountain routes. So that's good. Um, I have everything in, in the kind of order I want it right. Yeah, that works. Okay. Just looking around at all the products. On the first floor with no products. Let's see if we can't get that Growlithe before I level more. Even after we get the Growlithe, I do want everything at least level 15. Um, and I do want to get to level 16 for, uh, for Box Lightner. And while we're here looking for the Growlithe, I'll also get some more XP for Box Lightner as well. But obviously I want to get Box Lightner in 16 so I can actually have him evolve and not be useless. Other abbers aren't going to help with that. Especially if I have to switch out and then they'll just use teleport anyway, so I'll just make things quicker by using teleport myself. Alright. Got about 15 minutes left in the video, I suppose. There's a Growlithe. Alright. Will this cooperate? That is the question. No, not stats. And again, swap in Tony Stoney because she has resistances against all the regular attacks that uh, Growlithe can do at this level, which are pretty, pretty much Ember and Tackle, I think. So, while she's still... Oh, Bite. Okay, she doesn't have a resistance against Bite. Bite is a Dark-type move, but... Um... She can still hold her own. Even if she gets burned. Okay, good. Roar can fail. That's good. So let's start... Let's use these great balls. Higher catch rate. I don't want it to roar itself away. Crap. Oh, hang in there, Tony Tony. Oh, that's not good. Helga also has resistances, but... Um... I was afraid that with her attack she might, like, just accidentally faint it. I also don't want to risk swapping because... If I do that, it gives it another chance to roar. There we go. Now, Growlithe, I really don't normally have a standard name for. When I used Arcanine in Let's Go, I called it Pupper. And Pupper is also a fairly gender-neutral name, so we'll just go with Pupper. Pupper went to the PC. Nah. <laughs> Not gonna scold her for poking at the bag. So would she take something out of the bag? No, she didn't. 
think what I'm going to do... I'm actually going to go ahead and box the Togepi egg. Because I'm not really planning on using Togepi anyway. And I think what I can do is whatever hatches from the odd egg, depending on what it is, I can use that as my sixth. I guess depend, I, like, depending on what it is. Um, though, to be honest, I don't think I would use half the things that it would be. Like, Tyrogue is the only thing I can think of that I might actually use. Because I'm not a big fan of using... I mean, maybe, Clef maybe Clefairy. Because um, uh, I already... I'm not budging on using Ampharos as the electric, so I'm not going to be using... Like, if it hatches into Pichu or Elocate, I'm not going to care. Um, I'm still kind of, like, iffy if I want to... Because I just, I just caught a Growlithe, so I don't know if I want to... Um, Um, I don't know if I would want to use Magmar instead. And, um, Smoochum evolves into Jinx, and I'd rather use, I'd rather still use Alakazam as the, uh, as the, uh, the Psychic type. Um, okay, here's, here's how it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna box the regular egg. This is the, this is the Togepi egg. So Togepi Egg was first in the party. And then I'm going to swap in Pupper, so he can get some experience as well. Start building up his levels to at least 15. I'm going to keep the Odd Egg on me until it hatches. If it hatches into a Tyrogue, possibly, maybe a Cleffa. So I don't know if I really want a Cleffa or an Igly Buffer either. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't be opposed to using, like, Wigglytuff or, or Fable, but I hate friendship evolution. And that's the major thing, is that the baby forms evolve via friendship. They don't evolve via level, like everything else uh, that, that can hatch from that. Um... I don't know. Maybe we'll just we'll just stick with that. Um, if, it, if it's a... Um, if it is... An Iglybuff, or a Cleffa, or a Tyrogue, or a Magby. I'll use it. And then, like, find another six, I guess, if it's Magby, because I'm not going to use two fire types. Um, if it's anything else, I'll swap over to the Togepi Egg, and we may use Togetic. Uh, if... Uh, if I can, um... What's the word I'm thinking of? If I can stand using the Friendship Evolution to evolve that. Because that also evolves with Friendship. Alright, let's move your stuff around. I'm not planning on using Roar for anything, really. Let's go with our Stab move here. Although Bite is also very good, even without Stab. Especially at this level. I mean, when we get Crunch, that's a different story, but... You know. Also, another another uh, change they made to this is that I believe the Celadon department store once again stocks evolution stones in its inventory, in its uh, in its um in its store. So I don't have to do stupid bullcrap brittle things for like one each for the evolution zones. That was a stupid idea. Um, and I hate that they did that. Because Gen 1, apparently, is, like, the only generation that's gotten, um, what, what do you call it? Uh, the, uh, getting evolution stones properly. And it's, it's remakes as well. Everything else you have to go through, you have to go through hoops to get, like, a singular one, maybe. Gen 3 was okay because you could find... The, basically, you got the evolution stones through finding shards or whatever. And you could find multiple of the shards, it's just that you had to know where to look. You still couldn't just buy them. In Gen 2, there's, like, one person who lives at Bill's house in Kanto. And if you show him certain Pokemon, like a, like a Pichu, 
is one. I don't remember all the other ones. But you have to show him certain Pokémon in order for him to give you the corresponding stone. And, um... Even then, you only get one of each. It's like Fire, Water, uh, Thunder, and Leaf. You only get one of each. Like, in any given playthrough. You can't do the... Do the, uh, the riddles again. Moonstones, I think, are sometimes held by Clefairies, like Wild Clefairy. And then Sunstone, you can find a couple times here and there, or you can win them from the bug catching contest. Um, but as far as I know in this game, at the very least with the Fire, Water, Thunder, and Leaf Stones, and, and Crystal Clear anyway, uh, you can actually um, purchase them at the uh, Celadon Department Store event. So that's good. So I don't have to go out of my way too much, at least, uh, to get a Waterstone to evolve Growlithe. Not that I'm evolving Growlithe right away. I'm fairly sure that in Gen 2, most Pokémon that evolve through Evolution Stones still don't learn uh, moves after you evolve them. So I want to make sure that I at least have Flamethrower, possibly Crunch. Mm. I don't know, was, ex was Extreme Speed in this game? I don't remember if Extreme Speed was in Gen 2. Because if Extreme Speed is in this, then it's it's likely that Arcanine can just learn that. I'll have to look into that. But I do want Extreme Speed on Arcanine. That's like one of his signature moves. But I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind having Crunch on him, and I definitely want Flamethrower before I evolve him. Because Flamethrower is the best fire type move in my opinion. I know that there are stronger ones like Fire Blast, but they also come with the expense of having greatly lowered accuracy, which is, whereas Flamethrower and Fire Punch, Fire Punch is also very good. Um, Flamethrower and Fire Punch pretty much have, like, the best attack power without sacrificing accuracy as far as fire moves go. But, like, Flamethrower is always one of those, like, moves that I always make sure that I have, like, uh, uh, Thunderbolt is another one, Surf is another one, uh, Psychic is one, Earthquake. Oh, whoops. I meant to swap over to Abra again. Oh, well. But those are, like, the main ones. I'll also have, like, other... You know, this this is this Pokémon type. Oh, Ice Beam is the other one. I, I always make sure I have Ice Beam, because Ice Beam is versatile. And it usually works out double well in Gen 2, because in Gen 2 I usually have Lapras. And Lapras is also very, very good. I like using Lapras a lot. But I'd rather use Blastoise over Lapras, because I like Blastoise more. That's mainly what this team is going to be, is just, like, favorites, more or less. Although I don't, I don't really consider Tyranitar to be a favorite. I am still planning on using him by the end. And again, once we get to a certain point, um, I am going to be replacing um, Growlithe or Arcanine, whichever one we have, with uh, Cyndaquil. Actually, I know we only have a few minutes left, and I still have some levels up, but I'm going to basically get again, the rest of the levels probably off screen. Um... I don't know. Level grinding can be kind of a bore to watch. I know that I just kind of, like, fill in. I just don't want to... My, my problem with grinding with this game and recording it at the same time is that if it's still within the main runtime of the game, I'll still include it just because I don't want to be chopping up the video too much. Um, but uh, if there's more grinding to do off screen, then I'll do it off screen. Um, so I may just do that here. I have a few minutes left, but something I wanted to do, because I got Abra and I got Growlithe. And then... Otherwise, all that's really left to do... The next thing I have to do is pick my next gym leader. So I may as well go ahead and pick the next gym leader now. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my, uh... random number generator that I just bring up on Google. 
So now we're only going for a value between 1 and 15 this time because Claire, we already beat Claire, so I kind of just I took her out of the list and moved everyone else's um, numbers up to, uh, to uh, accommodate. So generate number, and we got number 11. If it'll show up on the screen, there we go, 11. And that's going to be Erica, who's in Celadon City. So, actually, we're going to have plenty of chances to to level grind. Um, I at least, I do at least want to get Abra up to level here. Uh, because Goldenrod is the only place that has the, um, as far as I know, Goldenrod's the only place that has the trade evolver. And I want to have Alakazam. I, I, you know... If I, if I have Kadabra and I have a way of instantly getting Alakazam, why wouldn't I do that? Um, I don't know. Um, I'll just do some off-screen leveling here. Uh, and then I will cut to when... He's got two levels left. Yeah. Because, yeah, we're... I'm, I'm pretty much at the uh, at the hour mark now altogether, pretty much. What I'll do, uh, I will level up um, Abra, Fox Lightner, to where he evolves. Oh, Stubble can just run? Okay. No skin off my back, but that's also experience I could have had. Uh, I'm going to level him up until he evolves. Then I'll come back, and we'll show him evolving into Alakazam... And then we'll end the video there, all together. So, one moment. Um, I know I don't want to break it up this much, but hey. It's just going to be grinding until we start heading towards Celadon. So, one moment. Actually, you know what? Let's let's record a little bit more. Uh, I still want to get um, Box Lightner to where he needs to be by the end of the thing. But I remember that there are other places where trainers are that I haven't fought yet. Like the National Park up here. Um, I just wanted to keep all the training down in or the trainer fights pretty much into the uh, in the videos but oh well, there's even some over on like route 36 that we haven't seen yet uh there should be a lady here uh she gives you a quick claw that's a hell that's a hold item um and whoever holds it has a, a higher chance of going first uh even if um has a chance of going first, even if they're normally outsped. Uh, I did get some uh, some experience in for Box Lightner. He's at like a 14. I don't know if he was 14 when I cut or whatever. Um, I did do some reloading here and there as well. Whenever I ran into a trainer, I didn't mean to. But um, then I was just like, why am I not just keeping this on camera if I'm just gonna be if I'm gonna be fighting other um, trainers? So. Uh, Box Lightner should not be too far from 15, if I remember correctly. This person has a snubble. It shouldn't be too big a deal. Again, a lot of the a lot of the wild Pokemon around here are higher level than the trainers, but. Um, Trainers also give you money, and money is good for buying uh, items that you need. Because, um, just kind of as a, um, a small spoiler, it's not going to take us long to get to Celadon at all. I know Celadon is in Kanto, and we're in, like, basically the middle of Johto here, but um, the way it works is, um, well, well, I could basically just go east from Newbark Town and, like, through, like, Route 27, I think it is, like, Route 27, Route 28, basically through the Victory Road area over to Viridian and work my way from there. Um, the Magnet Train just works. The Magnet Train just is, is up. Um, and it, uh, it runs between Goldenrod and, uh, Saffron, and Saffron is right next to Celadon, basically, so, um, it's not going to take us long to get to Celadon. There's probably only going to be a, a few trainers in between. 
but I do at least want to train up until um, Box Lightning evolves. And then, we, and then I'll cut the video. So it's going to go a a for a little bit longer than I normally plan these to be. Like I said, I normally plan these to be like, like hour-long things, but um, I know we're only on episode 3 right now, but uh, we'll just make this a bit more of a bonus length episode, why not? A little bit more. Depending on how long it takes Pupper to get rid of things. Growl doesn't do anything on Pupper because in this, uh, all dark type moves are special moves. So Bite is not physical in this. If this were Gen 4 and onward, it would have been a problem. If I wanted to use Bite. Check out my bag. I printed out my favorites from my Pokedex and stuck them in my bag. Oh yes, um, in this, the Gen 2 games anyway, uh, and Pokemon Yellow, uh, they were compatible with the Game Boy printer, as was the style at the time. A very short-lived style, but a style nonetheless. Um, you could print out things like Pokedex entries, uh, Pokemon stats, uh, you know, party stats that you had with Pokemon in your party, um, I believe box lists, you could print those out. So, if you have a Game Boy printer, um, and you have compatible paper uh, for the Game Boy printer, I mean, Lord help you if you want to try to find, like, original Game Boy printer paper with the sticky on the back, but, um, like, if you've got normal, like, thermal paper that can fit in the Game Boy printer, you too... Um, also, if you have a Game Boy Color and a Game Link cable. Or, like, really any Game Boy up to the Game Boy Advance, but you have to have a cable that's compatible with the Game Boy Color. Anyway, if you have all those things, um, you too can uh, print out your favorite Pokemon on stickers via the Game Boy printer. If the, um, if you can still make them out, because... Uh, this day and age, uh, Game Boy printers, oh, don't work as well as they used to. Alright, let's get Vengeance for Pupper. I know that he wasn't going to get a lot of experience, because he really hasn't been with the split experience thing going on. But, uh, yeah. I really don't feel like going back to town, so... I am gonna kinda leave Pupper fainted for now. Um, and then, like, once once Bo Box Lightner's evolved, I'll, uh. I'll start focusing on leveling Pupper until. he's level 15. Because I'm only. I'm not going into the next gym until everything's at least level 15. And by everything being level 15, like, Pupper's the only one that isn't. I don't know how many trainers might be on Route... Was it Route 7? Which is the one that between Saffron and Celadon, but, um... There's still a patch of grass out there I can train in for the time being. Um, I do, I do want... At the very least, I do want Pupper to be a decent level. Uh, Pupper and, and, I mean, Box Lightner is probably going to sweep a lot of stuff, too, because a lot of Grass-type Pokémon are part Poison in Gen 2 still. Um, I think even in Gen 1, um, in Gen 1, uh, I think there was, like, only one pure Grass-type Pokémon, and that was Tangela? Or Tangela? I don't I'm saying I should, I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's Tangela is the official translation. I think that's the one I normally go with, but I don't normally say it that often because I don't normally use Tangela. Um, that's okay. We got stuff for poison. Um, but even the, in in this one, I think the only other pure grass type Pokemon in this is like Sunkern and some Flora. Um, so, like, most of the, uh, um, grass types in the game... Oh, Bell Awesome. Bell Awesome is another one that's pure grass. Um, 
But I don't... I can't think of too many others. Like, I know... You know, Paris is part bug. But, like, all of the other grass types in the game are uh, part poison. I didn't fight that trainer yet. That's a flying type. I'll go to Pris. Oh, Pris is about to level up. She probably won't level off of this, but... Still. Well, judging by the, the trainer levels at one badge, I might even be overleveled for that, but... Then again, Claire was a pain in the butt. So I can only expect that Erica would be a pain in the butt as well, even if the levels were at. Um, so I still want to have level 15 to be my absolute minimum going in. I know Helga is a little bit more, but we're not really going to use her, because she's Water-type. In fact, the only things I can really see being effective here are Box Lightner and Pupper, because at the very least with Box Lightner, the Psychic-type is going to be good against the Poison-type grasses, but I think Pupper is going to be going to have to be the MP MVP uh, due to the Fire-typing, because I don't have a gra I don't have a Flying-type. And that's, like, the only other thing, other than, like, Ice-type, that, um, that, uh, Grass is susceptible to. Bug-type moves off also, but I don't use Bug-types normally. There are some Bug-types that are really cool. The aforementioned Heracross, I'm also a fan of Scyther. Um, but, uh, I also use Butterfree quite a bit in Gen 1. Like, in the early stages of Gen 1, I'll use Butterfree. But I, I don't usually use a lot of, uh... I don't generally use a lot of bug types myself. Okay, I'm gonna risk it here, because... Do I have any revives? I do have a revive, but I don't know if I want to use it, because they're expensive. I think I'll risk sending in Helga just to use Confusion on it. Because it's gonna be like that Bulbasaur. And that's going to use Absorb. Which luckily doesn't do a lot, so Confusion should be enough to knock it out. No, as, as long as Box Lightner gets his experience, it's fine. That's the main reason we're doing this. He's also got a Growlithe, which I can easily dump rocks on. You know, rocks fall and you die. That's pretty much what rock throw is, is rocks fall and you die. Unless it misses. Rock throw does have a tendency to miss. Often enough. Ooh, Tony Stoney's about to level two, so this is going to be a double... Well, I, I don't think that Box Lightning's going to level up off of this, but... If he does, then there's going to be two level ups for this because Tony Sony's about to level two. Fortunately, Tony Stony doesn't evolve as a. Uh... Ooh, Magnitude! Magnitude's good. Um. Well, Magnitude can be very good. Um. The way Magnitude works is that, um. A, uh, a number will come up when whenever she uses it. And, uh, see, it doesn't even have a... It, it does random, uh, based on what magnitude pops up. And it's, like, magnitude 5 through... Or no, not 5, 4 through 10. 4 being very weak. I think the decent damage starts coming with magnitude 6. And then magnitude 10... And magnitude 9 and 10, I think, maybe. At least magnitude 10 is more powerful than Earthquake. Um... That said, magnitude is still very good at early levels, I've found. But the moment I find Earthquake, or the moment that we can learn Earthquake, I would get uh, that's when I get rid of Magnitude. Or maybe even Dig. I, I, I tend not to use Dig that much, because I'm not a big fan of... Um, I'm not a big fan of moves that have, like, a setup turn. 
but it's for reasons that I really shouldn't worry about. Because the reason that I come up, I, I think of, you know, of those as bad, like fly and dig and stuff, is because, um, you know, the uh, the opponent can easily use that turn to heal their Pokemon up or something, because you know they won't necessarily hit. But then I I just remembered that the AI normally doesn't do that. It, it depends. Certain trainers will have like you know potions and stuff that they can use. But they'll only use them at certain, you know, HP ranges, like really low ones. You know, you're going to see the Elite Four and Champion, they're going to be probably spamming full restores. And we've also seen um, Claire use some stuff like that as well. Gym, gym leaders will have them. But yeah, well, we finally got Fox Lightner here to level 16. So now he's a Kadabra, which is fantastic. Uh, because once he evolves into Kadabra, he also learns Confusion. And Kadabra can now actually be used for things other than sitting there and being an XP sponge. While everyone else levels up. And for the time being, I'm also going to go ahead and put Pupper out front. For when he's revived. Well, actually, what, what kind of berry does he have on him? I'm not necessarily going to take it away from him. Let me just see. There it is. Burnt Berry. It's also a little sad um, that he didn't make his... Um, he didn't do his cry when I checked him because he's fainted. So I'm going to remedy that by uh, reviving him here. But wait! There's more! I know I've already been doing this, this segment for 15 minutes now, but like I mentioned before, there is one more thing I want to make sure that we do before we end the video, uh, and that's Evolve Box Lightner again, because I haven't actually seen this done. Hello, Tradeback Guy. Yes, I do have a Pokemon I'd like to evolve. That's this one. So how does this work out? Floof to trade back. Kadabra was sent to trade back. Is he just going to send back an Alakazam? Or... Oh, he's going to send up another Kadabra. Is it the same Kadabra? We'll still have the same, like, trainer ID and everything. Yeah, okay, it does. Take good care of Kadabra. And he's still box. Okay, good. So, yeah. Where this... Uh, I, I still think it's... Amazing at this low level. I, we already have a, you know, a third stage. Hey, it worked. Glad I could help. Thanks, my dude. Uh, and once uh, Tony Stony gets to the point where she evolves into Graveler, which uh, isn't until level 25, unfortunately, but uh, once that happens, um, we will uh, take her to the Tradeback Guy to turn her into a Golem. But uh, that's going to be it for this video. And when we come back. Uh, we're going to head to Celadon City and um, beat up some trainers in between. But uh, ultimately, I would like for the next video to focus on uh, defeating Erica as our second gym badge challenge thing. And then we'll see what we can do afterwards. But until then, I've been Captain Floofers, and I'll be here next time. Join me, won't you?